All right, hello everybody. Welcome to History 1111, World History 1 for Summer 2020. I am Mr. Kennedy with my great coronavirus hair here. I just want to take a couple moments in this video to kind of introduce you to the class and what's going to be expected, what we're going to be doing, and what you have to look forward to. So I'm going to go through Blackboard, show you everything you need to see, and give you a rundown of how the class is going to run. All right, so this is what Blackboard looks like. Uh, I hope most of you have seen it before, but if you haven't, this will give you a quick little preview. And this is what our class looks like. And I'm going to enter student preview so you can see it the same way it would look for you. And over here you see on the left, home page announcements, student center, syllabus, calendar, lessons, discussions, my grades, messages, and upswing tutoring. I'm going to click on syllabus for you. There are a couple important things to see on this page. The first one right here at the top is the course agreement form. You have to complete the course agreement form before you do anything else. If you do not click and complete the course agreement, when you go to the lessons button and you press your mouse button on the lessons button, you won't see anything there, it will be blank. The second thing here is the History 1111 syllabus. And I'm going to show you this because this tells you everything you need to know. You can see my name here, Jason Kennedy. My email address, jason.kennedy at westgatech.edu. That is a very quick way to get a hold of me. Normally I would be on the Carroll campus, but because the Carroll campus is closed, we're doing everything online virtually. And I do have virtual office hours available on Discord. Uh, some of you may be familiar with Discord, some may not. Uh, that is a link you can click on in the syllabus that will take you to a Discord page, which I'll show you in a moment. And then we can correspond in real time, almost like we are face to face. For the most part, I'm gonna be available every day, Monday through Friday, 12 p.m. to 10 p.m. Uh, my phone is dis on Discord, so if you send a message to me on Discord, I'll get it in real time. Also, the email address is where you can send files or, or um, communications that you would like to do in private. The textbook is completely free. Uh, it's this blue link right here. It's called World History, Cultures, States, and Societies to 1500. If I click on this link, it will open up a textbook. This is a textbook that's provided for free. It is made by the University System of Georgia. Now this operates just like a regular textbook. You'll see it's got all the good stuff that you can't wait to read. Table of contents, chapters, writing, pictures. Don't worry, I know most people won't read this. Don't worry. All right, some other things for you in here. You have your link to all of your school policies, procedures. This should be the same for every syllabus you see. And because of that, I won't go over it in detail. There is attendance for this class, but it's really, really easy. Number one, you're expected to do your work. Do your quizzes, do your discussions, watch these videos complete your assigned readings. To be considered present for the week, you have to complete at least one of the weekly activities. You have to do one quiz, one discussion, one assigned reading to be considered present. Ideally, of course, if you want to get an A in this class, you'll do all your work, and I hope everybody does. If you get perfect attendance, if you complete your work for all eight weeks, then you will get some bonus points for your final grade. Another very important thing is plagiarism. Plagiarism is a serious offense. Unfortunately, there's somebody who plagiarizes every semester, and I'm hoping this will be the semester where nobody does. It says, the penalty in this course for plagiarism or any other infraction of academic integrity will be a grade of zero on that assignment. Incidences of plagiarism will also be reported to the college for disciplinary action. Most students don't intend to plagiarize, but it is your responsibility to make sure that it doesn't happen. All work for this course must be original to this course. 
coursework from prior semesters or courses may not be reused. And then I say in here, any lying, cheating, stealing, or plagiarism will result in a grade of zero for the assignment, test, or quiz in which it was committed. Multiple instances will result in removal from the course. What that says in plain English, do your own work. You are the one taking this class. Your friends aren't taking it. Your parents aren't taking it. Boyfriend, girlfriend, Google, people on the internet, none of you are, none of those people are taking it except for you. Always do your own work because even your worst work will be better than somebody else's work. And I seriously mean that. So you may not think you're good at history. You may not be very good at writing, but promise if you do your own work, you'll get credit for it. Moving on in person, this is usually the, the scary stuff um, through the webcam. I have no idea how you're reacting to this, but I will tell you there's a lot of work for this class, but if you do the work, if you make an attempt, you'll get a decent grade. First thing you have to know, two tests. There's a midterm exam, there's a final exam. Midterm is 20%, final is 20%, the exam is 40% total. There are these things called reflection papers. There are four of them. They are opinion-based papers. Five times four is your 20%. Museum review. You will have to review a museum. Now you might be thinking to yourself, wait a minute, all the museums are closed. You're right, they are. So I have virtual museums that I have links for in Blackboard, or you can watch a historical film. Activities, that counts your daily quizzes, your daily discussions, things like that, that's 15%. There is a research paper, and I know for a lot of people, research paper is a bad word, but this is not gonna be a hard research paper. What I'm gonna have you do for your 10% of your grade is find something that we're gonna talk about in this class, research it, and then give me a five-page paper on it. If you find something that you're interested in, five pages is nothing. Maybe you're interested in Julius Caesar. Maybe you're interested in Martin Luther. Maybe you're interested in the Renaissance. Five pages on a topic of your choosing. And then participation, that's your attendance. 5% of your grade is your attendance and participation in course activities. All right, this is where I break everything down. Exams, once again, two exams, they're not cumulative. So first half of the class is first half, second half of the class is second half. I have in here, it says multiple choice, short identification, fill in the blanks, but let's be honest, with it being online like this, I'm gonna give you multiple choice with maybe one short essay. Those reflection papers, four of them, each one's worth 5%. Uh, they should focus on some of the assigned readings that are in the class, and I'll show those to you in a moment. And how I have it set up, it's going to be about a page and a half. Make sure you double space it. Your first paragraph should just be telling me which of the many articles you've decided to reflect on. And then for the rest of it, you have to give me your thoughts, your opinions, your ideas. This is where you write in first person, I like this because XYZ. I don't like this because X, Y, Z. I feel strongly about this. I like this. I hate this. A reflection paper should be a personal reflection about the article you have read. The museum exhibit review, you're expected to look at one of the virtual museums or watch one of the historical movies located in the museum review folder. And it's kind of like an expanded reflection paper. I want this to be about three pages, two and a half to three pages. Think of it kind of like a historical critique. So you're gonna look at a museum exhibit and you're gonna say, do I know what's going on? Are the exhibits adequately explained? Do I, do I understand it? Does the museum's website layout, does that make sense or is it completely clueless? Is there something that the museum has done really well? Is there something that the virtual museum needs to improve on? And if you're doing the movie, you might consider all that stuff too, but you also might want to consider for the movie, is the movie realistic? Is it factual? Does it actually follow the real events? So during the spring semester, some people chose the virtual museum. Some people chose the movie. The important thing is you give it a review a two and a half to three page review. Activities, that's your daily activities, what you're doing every day in class. 
so your quizzes your discussion boards any extra participation that we might have and then the research paper five pages I have in there five to seven pages make sure you get a minimum of five that does not include the title page that does not include the citation or not citations but the bibliography I want five pages of stuff so if you're researching Julius Caesar I want five pages of stuff about Julius Caesar if you're researching the Renaissance I want five pages on the Renaissance maybe the different Renaissance artists or whatever it is you choose to do at least five pages of stuff I'll let you read through this grading rubric on your own but this tells you how you're going to be graded and then at the end of this you'll notice it says extra credit if you do one additional museum review if you watch a second movie if you review two museums then you get two points added to your final grade it's not a bad deal and then at the very end of the syllabus I have the course lesson plan and this shows you when everything is due what you have to do now, I'm gonna be honest it is a summer class our time is cut in half which means you have to do twice as much work as you would normally in a semester the best thing I can recommend from you or for you and I say this with a lot of experience both as a professor and as a student when you do an online class do your work at the exact same time each week I don't care if it's 2 a.m. on a Wednesday morning that you turn stuff in the best way to do well in an online class is to do your work every week at the same time now for the first week of class we start today on Tuesday the 26th for this week you have to do what's in lesson folder 1 and lesson folder 2 it's two different topics it's prehistory and it's Mesopotamia and then under assignments you can see everything you have to do for this week you post your introduction complete that course agreement do discussion form 1 and 2 do quiz 1 and 2 sounds like a lot but if you manage your time it's not bad at promise for the second week of class you can see discussion forum three and four quiz three and four and your first reflection paper now I have it set up so that everything is going to open on Monday morning at 12 a.m. except for week one and then everything will close at 11:59 p.m. Sunday night what does that mean for you you have one entire week to turn in your work the week of the 22nd of June that is our midterm exam you'll have all week to do your midterm exam and then on July 20th you'll have one whole week to do your final exam and you can also see some more due dates your research paper is due by 719 that's Sunday night 11:59 p.m. your museum review is due on Sunday July 26 which is the very very last day of class the final exam would normally be proctored however because of the weirdness with our semester that's not a requirement for this semester okay I am back on syllabus and I'm going to click this virtual office hours and you'll see what this does is this brings you to our discord channel you can see here on the left hand side welcome to my office that's where you'll come in it's kind of my office lobby and then you can find your course over here on the left side I have it broken down by CRN number so you can ask me questions in the correct class if you like my contact information if for some reason you cannot open the syllabus you can click here where it says faculty contact information and you can see here my name my email uh, my phone number uh, this phone number you can leave messages and they'll be emailed to me but of course actually emailing me or using discord will be much much quicker and here you have the discord link so that you can open it up as well 
And then this weekly course schedule, this is the same thing that's on the end of the syllabus. So you've got when your work is due, what week you have to do it, and everything else. Okay, lessons. This is how our class is broken up. For the very, very first link here, you see World History, Culture, States, and Societies to 1500. That is a link that goes to our textbook. Chicago style citation information and discussion rubric. Uh, first of all, this down here, these discussion guidelines, that's basically how your discussions will be graded. Um, the easiest thing I can tell you, don't be afraid to write more than one sentence. Some of the questions that are asked in these discussions do require you to think and they do require a paragraph. I promise if you press the period button, the space button, and write a second sentence, you'll be okay. Your fingers won't fall off. For a Chicago style quick guide, uh, this is just a quick explanation of what Chicago style writing is. Some people have never seen it before. I'll open this up for you here. Hopefully you can see this. But with Chicago style citations, uh, this is going to be used for your research paper. You've seen this before, you just don't realize it. If you've ever read a book and there's a little footnote at the bottom, that's what Chicago style is. I don't want you to worry about it too much right now. I'll make a video towards the third or fourth week of class that goes into more detail on what Chicago style is. But I just wanted to click on this link so if you were curious about what Chicago style is, this is kind of how it works. The N means the footnote, the B means the bibliography at the end of your paper. The Purdue OWL, that takes you to the Purdue Online Writing Lab. That is the absolute best possible thing you can use to help you with writing. They have Chicago style assistance, APA style, MLA style, pretty much anything you could possibly write in. The Purdue OWL can help you. The reflection paper drop boxes. This is where those different reflection papers are, are, are going to be turned in. You see reflection paper one is due on July 7th, reflection paper two, July 21st, reflection paper three is on July 5th, and reflection paper four is on July 19th, all due at 1.59 p.m. When you click on the reflection paper drop boxes, you'll only see one reflection paper open at a time. That's just to make sure that you don't accidentally submit to the wrong drop box. But this Dropbox will close at 11.59 p.m. on the day that it is due. The Museum Review Dropbox is right here. Now you'll notice this very first line, your museum review may be submitted at any time during the semester. So maybe this weekend you have nothing to do and you want to watch a movie? Well, you can watch your movie and you can cons uh, submit your museum review. Now you'll notice that I have the approved virtual museum list. All of these are links that will go to different online museums. And then I have historical films as well. You can use any of these films. Now this link will not go to the film itself, it will go to a trailer. That way maybe if you've never heard of the movie Patton, you can watch the trailer, decide if you want to spend two, three dollars to rent the movie, and then you can watch the film. If you don't, then you can watch it a different trailer and decide which movie is for you. Research paper drop box. If you look, I have instructions here. I've got a little video for you to watch. It'll help you writing an essay, but there's no drop box yet. Uh, I've not made the drop box for this yet. I will do that closer to the due date. And that's simply because I don't want you to submit this too early. Now for your weekly work, lesson one, lesson two, lesson three, lesson four, so on and so on, you'll see a study guide. These are the things that you should get out of the textbook. So for lesson one, it's textbook page one through 20. 
PowerPoint and lecture, you see that there are a couple of PowerPoints here already. Um, I am going to create my own PowerPoints and I'm going to submit them in here along with video lectures to go along with these that came with the book. Those will be posted on Wednesdays, probably Monday and Wednesday, so I can break it up into two different videos. So Monday you'll see a short video and a PowerPoint posted, and Wednesday you'll see a short video and a PowerPoint posted. Since this is the first week of class, it'll be Wednesday only. Other things you'll see in here are the online readings. These are readings that go along with the topics for that class, or that lesson I should say. These are also the readings that you get your reflection paper material from. So for example, let's say you read this New Women of the Ice Age, and you read this article and, you're, and you say, wow, this article is really neat. I had no idea that there were women in the Ice Age who were doing so much to help. They're not just cave women like we, we think. Say you're really interested in this article, you do your first reflection paper on that. Or let's say you want to know more about Neanderthals and you read this article here, the brief look at Neanderthals, and you say, wow, I had no idea that Neanderthals were so advanced. I didn't know that they were so important to us. You could write your research, or not your research paper, but your first reflection paper on that too. There are some short videos to watch. These videos cover more of the material for you. And the quizzes are based on the videos. So you'll watch these three videos sometime during the week between now and Sunday. Then you'll do this quiz number one sometime between now and Sunday. Same thing with the discussions. These discussion questions are based on the readings. So you'll, for this first one here, it says please answer three of the four. I am going to go through and I'm going to make it say two of the four because it's, it's double the work. I wouldn't want to overload you. But these discussions will be based on the online readings. Lesson two is set up exactly the same. Study guide, PowerPoint, online readings, so on and so on. Okay, so that is basically how this class is going to go. Um, do your work. I say do your work at the same time each week. That way you know you don't forget anything. Or if you want to break it up a little bit, do it at the same time on multiple days just to make sure that you don't forget anything, you get all your work done. Time management, don't wait till the last minute. I say that both as a career student and a career professor. Uh, time management is really important. Some people learn that the hard way. I hope you guys don't. Trust me, just manage your time. Every Monday, every Wednesday, there will be a PowerPoint uploaded that I make and a video uploaded that I make as well. It'll be a YouTube link that you can watch anywhere that you have access to YouTube. And if at any time you need to contact me, you can use that Discord virtual office or you can email me and I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. Now, overall, I just want to wish you good luck. It's going to be a weird semester. Um, maybe towards the end of the semester we'll be able to see each other face to face. I don't know right now and I don't think anybody at the college does yet. So um, best of luck to you, and if you would do me a favor, this will be an extra very, very easy quiz. When you watch this video, send me an email. That way I can mark you down as having watched the introduction. All right, we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.